In this presentation, we are going to discuss one example based on translational mechanical systems. So, let's get started. Find the transfer function x of s over f of s for the system given below. One mechanical system is given to us and if we observe this mechanical system carefully, we can see that there is a body of mass m which is connected with a spring and a damper and the spring and the damper are connected to a fixed support. A force F of T is applied on the body of mass M to the right hand side and due to this force there is a displacement X of T to the right hand side. And for this system we need to find out the transfer function X of S over F of S where X of S is the Laplace transform of XT and F of S is the Laplace transform of FT. So I want you all to observe this mechanical system carefully and then after that we will move on to the solution. So moving on to the solution, the basic approach to solve such problems is to draw the free body diagram of mass m. The free body diagram is a graphical illustration which is used to visualize the applied forces and the resulting reactions on a body in a given condition. So in this case, we need to draw the free body diagram of this mass m. So let us consider this body of mass m separately and now we will analyze the forces applied and their reactions on this body. So if we observe this mechanical system carefully, we can see that the force Ft is applied on the right hand side and due to this there is a displacement Xt to the right hand side. Now what will happen if this body of mass m moves to the right hand side? Yes, we can see that the spring and the damper are fixed from one end to this body. So if this body moves to the right hand side, the spring and this damper will also start moving to the right hand side. But at the same time, the spring will try to regain its original position by applying an opposing force to the left hand side. Similarly, this damper will try to oppose the relative motion by applying an opposing force to the left hand side. The force of spring will be directly proportional to the displacement xt. And the opposing force of this damper will be directly proportional to the velocity of the system. So the first force is the restoring force of the spring. The restoring force of this spring which will act to the left hand side and it is equal to k multiplied with xt. We know that the restoring force of spring is k multiplied with the displacement. And the displacement in this system is xt. So it will be equal to k multiplied with xt. Now moving on to the second force which is the opposing force due to friction. So it will be equal to B multiplied with dxt over dt. The coefficient of friction is equal to B and the displacement is equal to xt. So the velocity of this system to the right hand side will be dxt over dt. And that's why the opposing force due to friction is equal to B multiplied with dxt over dt. There is one more force which is acting on the left hand side. If we try to move this body of mass m to the right hand side by applying this force f of t, the mass m of this body will try to oppose the change in its position and this opposing force will be directly proportional to the acceleration caused in this body. So we will call this force as the force due to acceleration and it is equal to m multiplied with d square x of t over dt squared. We know that the displacement in this system is xt and hence the acceleration will be double derivative of displacement with respect to time. Now we know all the opposing forces which are acting on this body of mass m and we are now in a position to draw the free body diagram. So the first force acting on this body is the applied force which is ft and it is applied to the right hand side. So we will have a force ft which is applied to the right hand side. And due to this, there is a displacement in this body of mass m to the right hand side and the displacement is xt which is given in the example. Now due to this force ft which is applied in the right hand side, the first opposing force is the restoring force of spring which is equal to k multiplied with xt. So we will have a force k multiplied with xt which will act to the left hand side. Since this force is an opposing force, so if this force Ft is towards the right hand side, this will act towards the left hand side. Similarly, the second opposing force is the opposing force due to friction, which is equal to B multiplied with dxt over dt. So we will have the opposing force of friction to the left hand side, which is B multiplied with dxt over dt. 
In the same way, the third opposing force is the force due to acceleration. This is the opposing force of this body due to its own mass, which resists the change in its original position. And it is equal to m multiplied with d square x of t over dt squared. So we will have an opposing force which will again act to the left hand side which is the force due to acceleration and it is equal to m multiplied with d square x of t over dt square. So these are the total number of forces that are experienced by the body of mass m and hence we can say that this is the free body diagram of mass m. We will now use this free body diagram in order to calculate the equation of motion. So this is the free body diagram that we created in the previous section and we know this is the applied force f of t to the right hand side and due to this force there is a displacement x of t to the right hand side and there are three opposing forces. The first force is the restoring force of spring which is k multiplied with xt. The second opposing force is the opposing force of friction which is b multiplied with dxt over dt. And the third opposing force is the opposing force due to acceleration. And this is the opposing force of the body due to its own mass. And it is equal to m multiplied with d square x of t over dt squared. Now, according to the Newton's law of motion, we know that sum of all the forces acting on a body is equal to zero. So we can say that sum of all these four forces acting on this body is equal to zero. We are now in a position to write the equation of motion for this body. But note that some forces are acting to the right hand side and some forces are acting to the left hand side. So which forces we should take as positive and which forces we should take as negative. So for that sake, firstly we will create a sign convention. And in this sign convention, we will decide that if a force is directed to the right hand side, we will take that force as positive. And that's why if the force is directed to the left hand side, then we will take that force as negative. Similarly, if a force is going upwards, then we will take that as positive. And if a force is going downwards, then we will take that force as negative. We will use this sign convention in solving all the problems of translational mechanical systems. Now using this sign convention, we can see that this force F of T is directed to the right hand side. So we will take this force as positive. So we have F of T as positive. Now we can see this restoring force of spring K X of T is directed towards the left hand side. So we will take this force as negative. So we have the restoring force of spring as minus K X of T. Similarly, this opposing force of friction is also directed towards the left hand side. And we will take this force as negative. So we have the opposing force as minus b dx over dt. In the same way, the force due to acceleration is also pointing towards the left hand side. And hence, we will take this force as negative. So we have minus m multiplied with d square x of t over dt squared. Now we can see we are done with all the four forces which are acting on this body. And hence we can say sum of all the forces acting on a body is equal to zero. So the algebraic sum of all the forces acting on this body will be equal to zero. And this is the equation of motion for this free body diagram. Now if we transpose these three terms to the right hand side and take the Laplace transform, we will have f of s equal to k multiplied with x of s plus b multiplied with s x of s plus m multiplied with s squared x of s. In this equation, x of s is the Laplace transform of xt, s x of s is the Laplace transform of dxt over dt, and s squared x of s is the Laplace transform of d square x of t over dt squared. And f of s is the Laplace transform of ft. And this is the force equation of the given mechanical system. Now, if we take x of s as common from these three terms, we will have f of s equal to x of s multiplied with k plus s multiplied with b plus s squared multiplied with m. Now in this example, we were asked to find out the transfer function x of s over f of s. So if we take the ratio x of s over f of s, we will have x of s over f of s, which is the transfer function of the given mechanical system, equal to 1 over m multiplied with s squared plus b multiplied with s plus k. 
and this is the transfer function of the given mechanical system. I hope you got this. This was a basic problem. We will take some more conceptual problems in the upcoming lectures. As of now, we are done with this lecture. Thank you for watching this lecture. I'll end this one here. See you in the next lecture.